What's that? Oh yeah. So anyway, that's I'll I'll stop preaching to you guys, but that's that's kind of my uh, my take on this is don't don't lose sight of what's in front of you. Uh, five minutes. Oh, I'm done. Mm-hmm. High five. <laughs> so there. <laughs> Do you guys have any questions or anything, or you're like, damn, you didn't talk about injections. Screw this guy. Yeah. What's up? How do you deal with clients that uh, consider a pen test uh, only like a CNA? Like, we just want this 800 vision for AA. Well, and that's it's our not a pen test, test, right? You don't penetrate. Right. <laughs> but when, they, when their CISO is saying, I know, that's I know. all we have to do to apply, how do you um, deal with those clients? It, it depends on who they are. Uh, most of the time, the way I deal with those clients personally is I try and attack what they value, not necessarily what they have to do, right? Before you even start. Exactly. You're no, no, no. Uh, socially, I attack what they value, right? So it's like, you know, they tell me, oh, I only have to do this standard because this is our corporate policy and blah, blah, blah. All right. Well, here's a method that you could use to attack you, and here's what it would do to the company. And when I say do to the company, I mean if a company is a brand value company, right, like a luxury goods provider or something like that, here's how I can affect your brand. And and this isn't going to cover this whole how I affected your brand, right? So I'll, I'll try and make those types of connections to them that are well outside of electronics and kind of down to the root of their business to scare them into it or whatever. But I'll also make some of the connections out to you know, like I was talking about with this, is you are focusing on testing one venue of attack, and if you're concerned about checking a box, we'll do it that way. But if you're concerned about protecting the asset, you have to say, we've identified nine other ways that you can attack it aside from this one. So really, this test is covering 10% of your landscape. But that's, that's an awesome question. I run into it constantly. The other thing you can do is when you do your pen test, wait till I have the pen test. And the key thing that you do is you profile everybody in Google, make sure you add that to the report, make sure whoever you're doing the report for is in all this profile information, and say, well, they can also bring it into network doing this, you know, going front door, posing it to you, just show how easy it is. Right. Just one, one other thing, never underestimate either the intelligence or the stupidity of a CISO, right? right? Mm. So, just recently, you know, I'm, I'm a corporate guy. And just recently, I, I had some external pen testers come in. You know, and they did the printing. Like, you know, and, yeah. and I usually include social engineering. And this time, I was specifically instructed not to do that. You know, and, and I'm thinking this is a huge gap. You know, and I'm, I'm arguing with the CISO, and you know, I'm going back and forth. And it comes out, he's got another group that's focusing on social engineering the company that I'm hiring. So never underestimate either the stupidity or the intelligence of the folks around us, because there may be other planes. Good intel. Um, he had one of the new. So. Yeah, I'm just curious, when you bring these results to your client, uh-huh. you say, so-and-so's doing this, we found this out. What do they say when you do this comprehensive test? They actually fix it. Do they? They actually fix it. I'll tell you what, that's, I've been doing this for now like 15 years and I've never found anything that actually makes a client fix something except for this. Um, most of the time, as any of you know who do testing, they, they look at the big report, it's a big giant report, they have all sorts of screenshots and whatever else in it depending on who and how they tested it. And they look at it and they're like, wow, that's comprehensive. And it's done, that's it, that's, your test is done. But, but when you start to paint this picture of a real life attack, it's way different. They, they connect to it very psychosomatically, right? It's, it's built more for testing people in a way that's psychologically congruent than it is electronically congruent, right? So when you're, when you're touching them that way and you're taking a, hey, look, here's a video of me walking through, shoving USB keys into stuff and doing this, and I'm, I'm the attacker, I'm sitting right in front of you. It's, it's real, you know, it makes it real. Whereas you can refute a lot of this, oh, well, this code that's right here isn't the way it's supposed to be, which is right here. So you need to do this. Otherwise, you could get attacked and lose all your data. The, the CSOs, the C-level guys are like, okay, so this number's supposed to be this number? And they know that, but it doesn't connect to their business understanding as well. When you connect it to their business understanding, that it changes how their acceptance is. So you're to them using 
Uh, video, electronic information, physical data, uh, everything. I mean, you know, I've brought servers into exit meetings before. Um, or, you know, videos of the events or, you know, being able to go through and show them standard kind of pen test reporting and pictures and all that stuff, as well as the timeline to root uh, or the timeline to critical asset data. But I also paint that in the context of branding it against their company, because the more branding they see, the more aware it's them. They can't, they can't kind of ostrich head in the sand. And I brand it to be them. And then you show them the breakdown of it. Yeah. So I was going to do that online. Mm -hmm. oh, for sure. Before you begin a physical attack, what kind of information do you disclose about what you'll be doing to the client? I tell them everything. You just, okay. Absolutely. I will tell them everything. As a matter of fact, I, I will tell the security guards to look for me. And me. I will give them my picture and tell them to look for me. And I'll, I'll high five them on the way into the office. I'm serious, man. Like, I try and be as open as I, I can about that because then that means, and, and you tell them that up front, like I'm going to tell you everything I'm going to do it and when I'm going to do it, watch for me. Because then you show them that even when they're on extreme and high alert, they can't defend against a real attack. And it makes it that much more impactful. Um, but that's, that's a great question. I mean, it's, a lot of people go, oh, I'm going to be secret sneaky, like don't worry, I'll get my information. Ha ha ha. Why? Tell them. You'll get it anyway. Yeah? What if, you're, if a company is concerned that your personal family or your family is Here's our situation. Mm -hmm. We're a defense contractor. Mm -hmm. And we have a bunch of baby boomers who have been around for a long time. Some of them have classified access. They follow pretty much all the rules. Sure. So we have Gen Y. It's kind of a good time. They want to be connected and whatnot. And they don't want to be. The attitude is, I'm smoothing my access to email. So, how do you, how do you sound with people who are used to having unfettered access? More like how do you, how do you deal with a company that doesn't want to attend its own courses? Because they don't want to attend So, my uncle always told me don't make waves, right? Um, but there's ways to window people to explain to them that the ones that are championing this rebuttal can be the people who champion securing it. So there's, there's usually some sort of voice, corporate voice, that says this will be accepted if you bitch about it. Right? I mean, there is. It's there. You just got to find it. And then once you find that voice, you connect to that voice and you make them the target of the test. Hey, look, because you used Gmail, our whole company got compromised. Let me bring you into the meeting and show you. Hell, let me take the tester who's doing it and put you two in a conference room and show him how he's reading your Gmail to get your passwords to steal our source code. They'll stop. I mean, it, it, they'll actually get connected to it because a lot of the times they just don't realize the risk. They don't understand why that could hurt someone. And, and you just need to kind of tweak them a little bit and say, okay, you know, get in the ring, let me show you. Because this is what we have to go through. And then it's either stand up for the company or let us get hacked. And if it's let us get hacked is your philosophy, then you probably shouldn't work there. So, well, thank you guys. I don't want to cut into anybody else's time. Um, I'll be around. <laughs>